So for, ta for day two of the class, our workflow will be that we need, to, um, we need to recreate what we did last week because everything we did last week is gone. I said last week that our computers have deep freeze. This little panda, not panda, this little polar bear looking at you right here is deep freeze. It means that the computer is locked. So if you do anything to the computer, restart the computer, all your changes are undone. So anything that you meant to do, like save your files on the desktop, those are gone. All the work we did last week with WordPress, that's gone. So we're going to need to create a brand new WordPress site again. That'll be good practice. But then at the end of the day, I'm going to show you what do you need to do to take the work with you so that we don't start over again every week. We're not going to start over every week from scratch, maybe the first two times. But then after that, I want to start on something we've already worked on and add to it. So our workflow is that first we need to activate the WAMP server virtual server. On the desktop you should see the start WAMP server icon. Go ahead and double click that. It's a little magenta colored W. Double click start WAMP server. Remember nothing pops up that says welcome to WAMP server. When you double click that what you should see is on the bottom right corner of your screen it may appear or it may hide itself inside of that double arrow down there next to decrease. You might, you should see a green W in the bottom right corner. Does everyone see that green W? Yeah. That's our WAMP server. That's our virtual software. The handout number one tells you to go to WAMPserver.com, download it, install it. It's already done for us here but we need to double click that W and make sure that it then pops up in the corner here green. From my handout number two, if we look at handout number two, this is already done for us as well. Number one, download the software. That's already done for us. Number two, we need to create a database. We need to we need to put WordPress in the proper folder. Then we need to install uh, create a database, install WordPress, and then we're ready. So um, I'm going to move this to the side. Let's go to uh, our computer window. Open up computer again if you closed it. This time, open the local disk C. C as in cat. We're going to have two things. These two things are for our particular labs. It'll be a little bit different at home. At home, if you use WAMP, you will have a WAMP folder, just like us here. But what we've got different here is I've got a folder at the top called Campus WordPress 1. This is a little different. You're not going to have this at home, obviously. Um, this is, I asked our technician to do something, and he didn't do it exactly right, and I'm not putting him down. He's a great technician, but he uh, did something slightly what I not, did not want. If you open Campus WordPress 1, yes, there's one in the network folder, and there's one on the C drive. That's the confusion. In the C drive, this one is not going to change. I don't have access to change this. The one in the network folder is the one that will change. But in your C drive, open Campos WordPress 1, and you'll see the WordPress folder. Right-click the WordPress folder, and select Copy. What we're about to do is what my handout says right here. Copy your WordPress folder into the WW folder. The WW folder is on the C drive WAMP folder. So that's saying... I'm going to back up, back up to the C drive. Down at the bottom here, you will see a folder called WAMP. Double-click WAMP. You will then see a www folder. Double-click that one. And in the www folder, you're going to right-click and paste. My handout is saying you're going to copy one folder, 
into this folder, and then we're ready to go. So let that copy over. It'll take a moment. Yes? So did everyone copy that uh, WordPress folder into the map? All right, so what my handout says is after this, we just uh, we did this. We copied the WordPress folder into the www folder. Next, we need to create a database, which is right here. So go to this web address. Open your web browser. Let's go to that web address. So any web browser you like. Which one do you like better? Which browser do you prefer? I like Opera better, but any one that you like is good. So you open your browser, and then we'll go up to the address, or we'll type the address, HTTP, slash, uh, colon, slash, slash, localhost, slash, PHP, my admin. Or step number two there, we're going to go to this address, press enter. You should then see the, um, now you should see the uh, PHP My Admin screen. If you don't, that means you're not running LAMP server, so call me over. But at this point, we've got our PHP My Admin. This is that screen that I said previously. We're, we're really only going to need to look at this at the beginning of the day. We're going to uh, set ourselves up at the beginning of the day, and once we're done with this part, then we'll be in the nice safety of WordPress. We'll be fine. But at the beginning, we have to do this to set ourselves up because these computers erase themselves every time you turn them off. So we have to do this every time, to some degree. My handout then says, okay, at the top bar, click on databases. In the Create Databases box, add the name WordPress and click Create. So you should see at the top you've got an you've got a button that says databases. Click databases. And then you'll see a box that says create database. We're going to create
create a database called WordPress. Uh, keep it all lowercase here. Keep it all lowercase. Um, it does matter if you have a capital W or not later down the road. So keep it all lowercase. And then click the Create button. Once I click Create, I get a yellow pop-up that says database named WordPress has been created. And I will see on the left side I've got a new database, WordPress. And down here I'll see a new database called WordPress as well. So did everyone get your database? All right, so we've got uh, we've got the WordPress software in the right folder. We've got a database, so now we're going to connect the two. Once that's done, then we'll get into the WordPress and actually work with it. This point right here, as I said previously, um, this method is um, what you would get done for you automatically if you purchase, when we talk about this later, uh, a domain provider. If you go over to Bluehost or GoDaddy or uh, any number of them, and you buy WordPress hosting from them, they do all of this. We have to do it ourselves. It's the long way. It's the hard way. We have to do this because getting Bluehost or GoDaddy, etc., is not free. That's going to be 60 80 90 $100 a year. This is totally free. 
Obviously, it's a few more steps. But the point of this is you can have one or a hundred WordPress sites, all for free. And this is also going to allow us to create a website here that no one will see until it's ready. If you go and create a WordPress site at GoDaddy, everyone's going to see you working on it as you work on it, which you may or may not care about, but I do. I don't want the finished product to be out there until it's ready. So with this method, we're working on a website that only exists on your computer. When it's all done in two months, then we'll talk all about, okay, uploading it to the real internet. But for the moment, this is not the real internet. This is a virtual server, WAMP server, localhost. So the next step of my handout is we've set up the database number three. Number two. Number three, install WordPress. So here we need to now go to this address. Go to this address, localhost slash WordPress. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. Notice it's not localhost.com. It's not a real website address. It's just localhost. It means your local computer. Enter on that, and then we will see the WordPress welcome screen. If this didn't work, that means most likely you didn't put that WordPress folder into the www folder. So here it'll say, what language do you want? I'll just select English, continue. Here then it'll ask you for some information to proceed, which we, which we have. We have a database name, we just created one, etc. So let's click, let's go. Database name. This is why earlier I said, let's create a database called WordPress. This is the, this is the default name it's going to look for. If you had called your database a moment ago, WordPress, like that, this screen will say, I can't find it. Because uppercase WordPress and lowercase WordPress are different. So, WordPress. Username and password in my handout. Change username. I have an example. Change username to root, remove the password, leave blank. So the example here, username, root, password, blank, empty, nothing. Don't write literally blank. You want to write nothing.
So this screen is asking us to connect WordPress with the database, username root, password blank, don't put anything there on password. Database, local ho uh, database host is local host, uh, don't change that, and table prefix, don't worry about that. Just click Submit. If it gives you an error here, again, did you create a database? Did you call the database WordPress? Did you call the database WordPress lowercase? Because that's what this is asking you right here. If you called it uppercase WordPress, then that's why it's going to fail at this point. Click Run the Install if it says All Right Sparky. Run the Install. That screen about root with a blank password, we only need that when we set up our WordPress for the first time. This screen here, this username and such and password, is what we're going to use over and over to log back into our site. We're not going to need to deal with Peach, my admin, and the database at all, really. This is the login information that we need over and over. And my handout then says, add a site title, anything you want, add a username, for example, admin, add a new password, for example, password, your email. So just following my own handout, I'm creating a site for my project. I'll call it Victor's Bakery. You call it anything you want. It can be changed anything, anytime you want. My username uh, will be admin, and my password will be password, which is the worst username and password you can use. But for the purposes of our project, which is not a real web project, it's not on the real internet, this will be OK. And just so that everyone can get back into it quickly, we're going to use this one. If you would like to use anything else, great. Make sure you write it down and you remember it, because I won't have access to it. It's your own login and info. I'm going to have to activate confirm use of weak password, because it is a terrible password. You don't want to use password or any variation, any clever variation of it. Don't switch that O to a zero. Everyone's already figured that out. And put, don't put dollar symbols instead of the S's. Everyone's already figured that out. Um, confirm that email address. You can put a real or a fake one here. Doesn't matter. It's not a real site yet. And because it's not a real site, I want to say here: have the search engines ignore my site. I don't want Google. I don't want Bing. I don't want Yahoo to look at my site. It's not a real site yet. Later on, we need to turn that off so that the, when we do upload it for real, the search engines can find us, give us traffic, make sales. Click Install WordPress. It'll process it, and then we'll get to the login screen while that's doing its thing. Make a note. I made it bold also on item 4. Eventually, when this is all done, sometimes what people, what people get through this whole process and it works, then they close their browser and say, how do I get back to my site? And guess what? I wrote it down. Visit your site at this address. You'll be able to get back to your site with this address, localhost slash WordPress. And you'll be able to go back to the login screen to edit your site with localhost slash WordPress slash wp-admin. Every WordPress site by default has that, slash wp-admin. So you can always get back to your, to your site that way. Eventually, you should say success. Click login. Log in with the username and password you just made, which in my case was admin and password. Log in. So let's pause here. Did everyone get the, was everyone able to log into the WordPress dashboard? Anyone need any help? Since uh, we're not able to select the database. Right, so I will check that.
So uh, this process that we did together, we're going to do a variation of it later. Uh, what we've got here is we've got a brand new, out of the box, brand new shiny WordPress. We're in the dashboard, which is our control panel, where we can edit all aspects of WordPress. Last week we took time to look at the various settings of WordPress. We've covered it last week. If you were not here last week, watch the video. But we're in the dashboard, also known as the back end control panel. I want to go to the front end. I want to go to the screen about what this looks like for my visitors. So remind me, how do I get back to the front end to see what it looks like for my visitor? I think I heard someone say you hover over the name of your site and then you click visit site. Or simply click the name of your site. That's the fastest way. Click the name of your site. Here's the front end. Click the name of your site again, and it takes you back to the dashboard. So we're going to work with our site, and then we're going to visit site. Dashboard, visit site. Go back to dashboard if you're not there already. So again, last time we spent time looking at settings. You can look at those yourself later. As soon as we log in, we get the dashboard, a quick way to help us uh, get started. Um, there's so many ways to customize WordPress. Um, let's take a, a look at this. Uh, I get a big old welcome to WordPress, and then you've got buttons such as customize your site, write a blog post, all of that stuff. At a glance, it says what you already have. I've got WordPress 4.5.2, one post, here's some activity. Oh, look at that. I've already got a comment on my site. I'm so popular. <laughs> Quick draft so I can quickly create a blog post, a new article, WordPress News. So this is what greets you right away. And later on, when we set up our e-commerce features, what will also greet us right away is, uh, is a quick summary of sales. So we will see what have we sold, most popular products and such. So this is the, this is the home view of the dashboard. This is all customizable. Let's say what I want to see right away first is activity rather than at a glance. So notice any of these boxes you can click and drag to rearrange. So try that. Drag some of these boxes around. There's not a lot of them to work with. But let's say, okay, I don't want to look at at a glance. So you can just click the triangle and it hides it. Just customization. Move things around, two columns, etc. So however you customize this, this will be what, what it'll remember this next time you log back in. Unfortunately, I don't believe there's a way for it to reset it back to the original view. So if you rearrange things all over the place and you don't like it and want to go back, I don't think there's a way to take it back. So we've got some, some arrangement here. Do you see at the top right corner you have a little help tab if you click that? There's always going to be some form of a help tab, so it'll give you some quick information and also the, the full documentation. So the whole manual to WordPress is going to be always easily found up on help. You don't have to click it, but if you click on it, that'll take you over to codex.wordpress.org. Remember we said previously, .wordpress.com is where you go to create a website, a WordPress website right now but it has its negatives that we talked about previously. We're dealing with WordPress.org, which the negative is that you're, you're on your own, sink or swim, but you have the most control and the most power for your website. And so whenever you're having any trouble, there's always help. Follow that and it'll give you the manual. Have you heard of that um, valuable saying, RTFM? It's read the funky manual. So if uh, you're having trouble, did you read the manual? Did you find out how to do it before you ask? The manual is there. But if you do have more trouble than that, there are these support forums, and these are great. The support forums are where people all over the world are helping each other regarding WordPress. People with, you know, nine years of experience, six years of experience, whatever amount of time of experience with WordPress where you can ask, my site is having this trouble, can someone look at it, people will help you, etc., for free. Although some 
problems might be more complex that are not a free solution, but oftentimes uh, you get a lot of great help for free at the forums. So that's the Help tab. Next to it, you've got the Screen Options. Click that one. And you're going to see this a lot. WordPress has so many options. And sometimes the options are not, some options are not active because the screen would be so cluttered. I think this screen's a little cluttered here. I personally never look at the WordPress news and this welcome to WordPress, I outgrew it a long time ago. I don't want to see those anymore, so if you want to turn them off or on, you just turn off the welcome and the WordPress news, and now your screen's a little bit more compact perhaps. Turn it back on, it's back. Just a little more customization there. Re rearrange your boxes if you want, turn off modules, turn on modules if you want. And here it's cosmetic, but on a different screen, I'm going to show you a couple of places where they've got a couple of hidden options that are invaluable. We'll get to that later. But there's oftentimes a screen options tab. And I bring that up because sometimes you read a WordPress article and it says, click this. And you look at your screen and it doesn't look the same. Perhaps your WordPress is a little different because your screen option is different. A good tutorial should tell you, if you don't see this, click on Screen Options and activate it. But if it doesn't tell you, check out your Screen Options and you might have an option turned off. Let's uh, jump over here to... On the fourth, the fourth section of Document 2, basic WordPress tips. We talked about those two. Uh, what we're going to do is create a post. We'll talk about the difference, of course, between posts and pages. Let's practice this. Hover your mouse over posts at the left and then click Add New. And I say hover over because some websites you need to first, or some, you know, some websites you first need to click something before the menu appears. WordPress is as soon as you put your mouse on it, it appears. And so I often see beginners, you click posts, and then you get confused. Where's the menu? Well, you clicked on it, and it opened it. That's just a, a quirk of WordPress. Um, most other menus, you have to click on it to open it. But WordPress is, you just, just touch it with your mouse, and it opens. And so hover over posts and select Add New. Clicking on that is the equivalent of clicking on posts and then clicking on Add New. So we have posts. The default WordPress behavior is that it is for blogging. A blog is simply a website that is updated on a regular basis. A blog could have a new article, a new post, every day, once a day, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever. On some basis, regular interval, a new article is added to the site. That's the defini basic definition of a blog. So here it's, let's write a new post, a new article. If you take the SEO class that I also teach on Wednesdays, um, one of the things we talk about in there about is the value of blogging, writing articles. These articles um, are more content for the search engines to find, to find you. I'm a bakery, Victor's Bakery, and there's more than one bakery in San Diego, so I want to get found, I want to get ranked higher than my competing bakeries. I have to engage in SEO. One of the tactics of SEO is to write articles. Take the SEO class for more info, take the blogging class for more info. But for us right now, let's think in terms about, can I think of writing an article on a topic that will help me get found? I'm a bakery. And I'm going to write an article such as how to bake a pecan pie. You can write whatever you want here. It doesn't have to be right. It can be changed. But writing articles, even for your site where you're trying to sell something, is valuable. Because how are people going to find your site to buy your product? You need it to engage in SEO, search engine optimization. You need to write articles, for example. <coughs> Let's say I'm a realtor. I want to get hired to sell houses. If you wanted to buy a house, what's one question you might have? 
of buying a house? Mortgages. Specifically, question about mortgages. How do I get a mortgage, maybe? So how do I get a mortgage? I asked in the form of a question because that's how people are going to search. When they go to Google, when they go to Bing, when they go to Yahoo, they're going to perhaps type a question. They might type mortgage, but then they get a million results. They type, how do I get a mortgage? And you get a thousand results, maybe. So if I'm writing an article like that of what people are searching for, that could help me get found. And there is much more to talk about SEO, but think about it in those terms. Can I write an article about a question or a topic that people are searching for? Let's say I've got some sort of, uh, you know, um, after school activity club regarding uh, child care. So I could write the top five tips for good child care providers. Or something. Something that someone is searching for. Where, do my, where, do my, where am I going to drop off my kid after school? So I've got that sort of title that will hopefully help me get found. How to bake a pecan pie. I'm going to sell cookies and cupcakes and pies and everything at Victor's Bakery. So I want people to find my bakery to buy my, 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 my food. People could be searching for, they want to do it themselves. They want to bake their own pie but it never comes out right at home. And so I've got an article here where someone can search this, find my company, they see how easy it is, they tried it, it didn't come out so easy, let me order one from them. That's my reasoning behind that, so that's why I would create this sort of article. So type whatever title, then click in the main editor right here. We've just added a title. At the top, that's the title of our article. We're going to write a little bit, paragraph, a little text, formatting, publish. OK. So we've got, yes, question? I know this is probably more of an SEO question, but let's say that you have a brick and mortar bakery, you don't do anything on the line, a live, and you want to get hired to help you with your SEO campaign. Would you be okay with that? Yes, but you don't have to fit it into the title here. If you mention that in the main body here, that's still good. Okay. Because the search engine will look at your title and everything you wrote and see all of those keywords. And when someone searches, they'll find your keyword anywhere that you wrote it. And you'll get the traffic. <laughs> uh, so here I've got a space then to start writing some text. And I've got a little bit of formatting at the top here. Formatting tools. I can type something and make it bold. I can type something and make it italics. I can type stuff and then all of these other like basic uh, editing tools. Bullet points, numbered lists, something that's a quote. set that as a quote. It'll look a little bit different. You can um, align things in the center, on the right side, etc. There's a link button, so let's say you have something like visit our shop. Well, you would need to select the text. This is going to be a link it's perfectly good. Part of the reason you're writing these blogs anyway is also to get people's attention and then maybe to have them do something. They're going to write this, you're, they're going to read this article, this how to bake a pecan pie, and they're going to see how great it is. But then if you put in there, if you insert in there somewhere, maybe a link, come by ours, or click here for 10% off your first pecan pie. Some incentive They've, you've got their attention with this article, how can I then convert them into a, into a client? Having them read it is nice, but having them buy something from me is better. That's my goal. What I'm getting at then is if you write some text and then click 
insert edit link. Right here you can put an address, link options, link it to your own links and such. So you can make this an active link to go back to any other one of your pages, to your Facebook, whatever. It's just a, a spot to add a link. Let's say I wanted people to go over to my to my Etsy. This is fake, but press enter. And then so this is going to be an active link. That's an active link. I don't really see anything here regarding um, a lot of style. Like maybe I like what this looks like, but can I change its color? Can I change its size? You don't have a lot of editing control. If you click the last icon on the row there, toolbar toggle, what that does is gives you a little bit more styling gives you the ability, for example, to do some underlining, justifying your text. Oh, here's a spot for text color. So if I make that a different color, paste, uh, clear formatting, special characters. So I've got some symbols here that I can put in. If I'm multilingual, I've got a variety of other symbols and language, it's a trademark symbol, here's indenting, I wouldn't use indenting however to center it, that's not what indenting is for, indenting is to indent, if you want to center something you click the center button, that'll perfectly center it, there's your undo, if you made a mistake undo it, redo it, and there's a little help Keyboard shortcuts. Yes. Is there any provisions to change font? Yes, and a no. Let me explain right here. Let's say I've got something here by now, and I want that to be a different font. I want it to be a different style to make it stand out. The default WordPress is that I have the format of a paragraph or these other ones here. So if I select heading one, that's big and bold, and now it's important looking. But notice it's very limited. These are just variations on a, on a size. It's going to depend on other factors, but if I do heading 4, it's just a little smaller. So I don't see here really any special styles. So if you have, however, experience with HTML code, then you can do whatever you want. Anything that isn't in a button here, you can write the code and choose any font, any color, any size, etc. So the answer to that is no, you don't have any font choices really here, but yes, if you switch to the text view, you've got visual view, text view, and this is okay, write your code, choose any, any font you want. Is that something that would actually be chosen for you and the theme that you choose? The theme will provide it as well. Depending on which theme you choose, it will have some fonts built in, yes. Right now we've got a very basic theme, so basic fonts. But depending on your theme, most likely somewhere in the theme, under Appearance Customize, it will let you choose actual fonts. How many of you... So yes. can you also bring images that comes with goals? Slides, like animation and such? Yeah, like animation. Yes. Um, we'll see a little bit in a moment. Under Add Media, we have a cool way to add images. And then we always have the ability to add really special and interesting images and animation via plugins. So we'll talk about plugins later for more features. Does anyone here have any experience in writing HTML code? So one or two people. Um, this is much more advanced. We'll touch on it a little bit. But again, take a quick look here. You've got visual and you've got text. They should call it code. That's your code view. You might already have a little bit of code right there. Um, 
And the point of this is you have then the ability to uh, to do things that are not available um, anywhere else in the in the main visual editor. Look at this. I put a background color of green. There's no button that lets me do that. But I know a little code and I put that there. So if you know code, you'll be able to write your code there and make it do exactly what you want. But that's a big endeavor to learn this code. Let me just show you at your leisure, you can go someday to w3schools.com and for free you can learn all of the code that makes up the website. WordPress is great because it shields you from this, but every website basically is made out of this code. And WordPress will have a button for you to click, usually, or something to drag, usually. Usually it'll have a way for you to customize your site. But the really advanced customization, most likely, is going to be via code. So anecdotally, our company, as I said, I teach this, but I'm also part of a company, PMD Interactive. We make websites for people. We do social media. We do SEO, all of that stuff. And when we get hired for a company that needs a website, we build them a WordPress website, yes. We don't build one from scratch because it's very expensive. We don't, we don't program a, a WordPress site from the basic code up. We do start with a theme. We work with the client, we choose a cool theme, and then we roll up our sleeves, and then we write the code to customize it. It's like in the real world, are you going to buy a house turnkey? Are you going to buy a fixer-upper? Or are you going to bulldoze a plot of land and build a house from scratch? That's WordPress. You're going to build a ha are you going to build a WordPress site from scratch? All code? Very expensive. Are you going to uh, buy a fixer-upper and update it? That's like getting a cool theme and then writing some custom code, you've got your own unique site. Or do you want a WordPress site that's turnkey? You just want to turn it on and have it go? Pick a built-in theme, a pre-built theme, activate it, and you're done. You've got a nice looking design, uh, very functional. So in our editor here, I'm just kind of freestyling a few things. Um, on the next line, just writing some things. Let's look at this for a moment. Add media. It's got a little music note and a picture, a camera. Click add media. We have various things here. Insert media, create gallery, featured image, insert from URL. Insert media, then has upload a file, media library. We haven't uploaded anything, so there's nothing here. Let's practice uploading a file. I've got some sample pictures for everyone to play with. So under the Upload Files tab, click Select the File. Notice the maximum size it'll take is 3 megabytes. That's a very big file. That's like a picture you got straight out of your digital camera. It's too high quality. You can upload very big pictures, but you shouldn't. Because big pictures, and a lot of them, will slow down your site. So when your site is too slow, people will give up and go elsewhere. This will require a little bit of a note here. Let me make some notes. Remember, I'm going to write some notes. I'm going to give you these notes at the end of the day, but I've got some notes to give you regarding pictures and such. Advice on pictures. Use your own original pictures. If you must search for copyright free or royalty free, or public domain type images. Don't just do a search online. Don't just search cupcake and get the first picture of a cupcake you see and put it onto your site. You're probably breaking the law. Um, a lot of us, unfortunately, don't still believe that, what I just said. People laugh. No, it's real. Would you walk into someone's real bakery and walk out with a cupcake without paying it? That's the same thing as going to someone's website and taking that picture on their property, on their website. 
It's digital. We don't think about it too much, but it's property. It's intellectual property. So you should create your own pictures as often as possible. Take out your camera and take a photo. Your camera on your phone is probably great quality. Use it. If you can't get a picture of whatever your product is, if you must search online, make sure you're searching and using these keywords. Cupcake, copyright free. Pecan pie picture, public domain. That will hopefully lead you toward pictures that are okay for you to use. Or you can go to a website that focuses on that kind of picture. I don't recall if I mentioned it last week. Pixabay.com. Pixabay.com is all about giving you free pictures. Totally free. It's not going to have a million pictures of a cupcake. It'll probably only have 300. Out of those 300, you'll probably find that perfect picture for free, free of uh, legal trouble. If you do shoot your, shoot your own pictures, uh, don't upload them as is. Don't shoot the picture, take them out of your memory card and put them on your site. Most likely they are huge. Our cameras nowadays are very high quality. And we have to deal with, let's say, edit the dimensions and the file size to a reasonable size. reasonable in quotes because that that varies but if you want some numbers uh, dimensions the dimensions with uh, between 1024 and 1920 pixels on whatever dimension um, I've got a picture that's tall so the tallest dimension 1024. I've got a rectangular picture, so the width 1024. I'm not saying a height because the software should automatically resize it in proportion. So if I do need to cut it in half and I resize it in half, it will uh, keep the proportion if you've got the right software. I'll mention software in a moment. But you most likely out of the out of the digital camera, oftentimes you get a picture that's like 3,000 pixels wide. That's way too big. You have to shrink it down to about 1,024 pixels, maybe up to 1920. It's I should write here, between 1,024 to 1920. I didn't mean, I didn't mean 1020 by 1920. Sorry. I meant 1024 up to 1920. Is that wide or well, like I just said, if it's a vertical picture, 1,024. If it's a white picture, 1,024. The height and the width will stay in proportion, um, depending on the software. Uh, I'm saying possibly up to this height, because depending on your theme, it may have a spot for a nice, big, beautiful picture. One of our client examples, I don't remember if I mentioned this last time, one of our clients is this website, Aki S. Texcoco. Mexican food restaurant. We've been doing really well. This is a WordPress site. Yeah, I mentioned this. This is where I showed the um, shopping cart and such. Uh, but for example, this. This big, interesting, tasty looking picture. This is most like this is more in the range of the 1920 wide. If you put in a 1024 pixel, it'll stretch it out in this theme and probably lose its quality. So depending on your theme. It should tell you, read the manual, it should tell you what dimensions to put in your slideshows and such. Um, what you also want to do is edit the um, good size. Out of the camera, your picture is probably one or two megabytes that's too big because then you've got five pictures five megabytes you've got ten pictures on screen ten megabytes or more <clears throat> and um, what you want is to have about 100 kilobytes to 
to 300 kilobytes per picture. And the thing about that is 1,000 kilobytes equals 1 megabyte. So if your camera gives you a picture that's 3 megabytes, that's 3,000 kilobytes. And I'm saying you should keep them between 100 and 300, so you're like 30 times larger. Again, bigger dimensions, bigger size, more to download, slows down your sight, and especially on a mobile device with bad reception, and they're trying to get to your site and buy your product or find your store, and you've got all of these beautiful pictures loading up, really, really slow, line by line by line, so never mind, they back out and go elsewhere. So this is often a consideration here. Keep your size, dimensions of your pictures reasonable, keep your sizes reasonable. Use pixlr.com for quick, easy, free photo editing. How many of you have heard of Photoshop before? How many of you know how it costs, how much it costs? Hundreds of dollars is the answer. So Photoshop is expensive. Um, Pixlr.com is totally free and it's like Photoshop Junior. And what you can do is use it to crop your pictures, resize your pictures, remove the red eye, add a cool filter, size it down reasonably, compress it to a good file size. It's good file size. So a lot to say about pictures. We just wanted to put a picture in our in our article, yes. But we're going to put a big one now, and a big one later, and another big one, and another big one. And we're going to have a really big slow site. So that's why we need to segue to talk about this a little bit before we add multimedia to our to our site. Any questions on these concepts? All right. So let's do it. Yes. I'm going to talk about video in a moment. That's another consideration, but the same thing holds true. You don't want it too big unless you need the high quality HD, and you want to compress its size as best as possible so that it downloads quickly. We'll talk about video soon. Here under Insert Media, then click Select Files, and I've got some pictures for you on the left panel. Scroll your panel all the way to the top left and go over to Pictures under the Library. Go to Pictures. Then you'll see sample pictures. Put a bunch of pictures there. Any one of these that you like. I'm going to get this penguin picture. Click penguin, click open. Question? On the left side over here, you want to scroll your panel to the top left, and then you will see desktop libraries and then pictures and then sample pictures. So I'm going to select penguins. It's going to upload it. It's not really uploading it to the internet, it's on your computer, so it went up really quick. But if it was a real website up on the internet, that's another reason why you don't want to upload or use a really big picture. You're going to be waiting for your pictures to upload And we didn't really deal with it, but in this particular one, this is 1024. It's larger than I would like. It's 768K kilobytes instead of the 100 to 300. It's OK, but that is already starting to be a quarter of a megabyte in one picture. I want it to be, you know, 100 to 300 or so. So I'm about to add a picture. On the right side, we have some basic edits. Don't click on this, but if we if we were to do that, we have all these basic edits where we can resize it and do a few things to it. Again, don't don't do that because then it'll kind of change your view. Yes. Uh, 
you can explore that edit image later. It's a bit basic, but it's, it's useful. What I do want to mention are these little boxes right here. We can insert our image as is, but notice we have a little bit of boxes to fill in here. If you've done any web design before, let's say like in Dreamweaver, uh, in Dreamweaver uh, what you would need to do is create a folder and put all your pictures in there. And most likely you would create an images folder in your website and then maybe a folder called products or, or maybe a folder called pies and put all your pie pictures in there. Create another folder called cupcakes and put all your cupcake pictures in there. That, that's the classic way for web design. In a modern web design software like WordPress or Joomla or Wix or whatever, you don't really have to worry about a folder structure and all of that. You just upload your pictures and WordPress manages it for you. So this is going to be uploaded. WordPress will store it somewhere. You don't have to worry about it where. But it's in your site. You have various things to fill in. What's the title of that graphic? Penguins. You can change that if you'd like. Caption. Do you want some text? to appear below the picture. Just to see what it looks like, I'll just write penguin party. Let me get back to alt text in a moment. Description. As I just said, you're going to upload your pictures to WordPress. WordPress will keep track of where they're at. But if you'd like to find a specific picture, it it doesn't give you like a folder to go into to find your picture. WordPress, however, has cataloged your picture with the keyword penguin. So if you've got a thousand pictures and you want to find your penguin picture again, you search for penguin. And it'll find your penguin picture. If you add a description here, this is something internal for you. You can write notes, basically, about your picture. So that later on, a month later, when you want to use this picture again and you don't remember what it's called, but you remember perhaps a little what you wrote about it, that's how you can find your picture again. So I'm going to say... Now, the, do penguins live in the Arctic or the Antarctic? I always forget. Okay, I'll trust you guys. Antarctic. I'm going to say Antarctic shot of the penguins. It's just a little note for myself. Later on, I might want to look up all of my Antarctic pictures. I have the keyword Antarctic in there so I can find it. Alt text. This is a very important box. All of these other boxes are optional. This one is one of the ones that I would say is required. Alt text. It means alternate text. This is related to issues of SEO and accessibility. Accessibility is um, when you create a website that is accessible, that is usable by everyone. Would it surprise you to know that people that are completely blind can use websites? You might say, well, how is that possible? I need to know, I need to see where to click and where to move my mouse and to click. Yes, you need to do that because you can see. But people that are blind can still go to websites because what they have is a computer that reads them what's on screen. The computer will read to them, insert media, button, upload file, button, media library, and then they have a keyboard that they memorize that it's the second button is the media library so I, they will click it. You don't need to see to, see a, to use a keyboard if you, if you know how to use a keyboard. And so alt text is for the blind people because the screen reader will read what you wrote right there to them. So if I was blind, I would like to know what this picture is that I cannot see. And so if you have written a, a short description, alt text, you're helping them. You're making the site accessible. You're letting more people come to your site to buy your products. Why would you exclude a whole group of people that want to buy your product because they can't see it? So if you put a description here, you might say, well, I probably will not have a lot of blind people coming to my, to my uh, website. Still, you should think in terms about, you know, uh, accessibility, social issues, profits, all of that stuff. 
to be accessible to most people. So here, just a basic description, penguins in a circle. That would be fine. That would be the alt text. Do you have to specify as a picture? No, this is automatically attached to the picture, so you don't have to be redundant to say a picture of penguins in a circle. You might say, this is extra work, I won't do it. You should still do it because now the search engines want you to do it. Now the search engines, to help improve your rankings, to help improve your SEO, you should be doing this. So if all your pictures don't have an alt text on them, that could be part of the reason you're not ranking well. The, um, the accessibility reason is a very important one nowadays, so much so that the search engines look for that. And I'll put it in my notes. For all your pictures, for all your pictures, you should add alt text. One sentence that describes the picture. If you don't know what to write, think about uh, uh, describing the picture to your friend on the phone. Your friend might have perfect vision, but at that moment they can't see it. So describe the picture to them. One concise sentence. few more settings down here. Alignment. Left, center, right. Pretty self-explanatory. Link to. Mine says none. We have a couple of options. We'll come back to these in a moment. Size. So I uploaded it as 1024. And this will show it as 300 by 225. That's useful. It does resize it to some degree here, although it sort of uses some sort of formula to pick these medium, large, and thumbnail sizes. If your picture, if you want your picture to be in exact dimensions, I wanted it to be 900 by 700. There's no picker here. It's either medium, large, or full size, or thumbnail. So you should still resize your pictures to the appropriate size. Don't rely on this. Don't upload your, your picture straight out of your digital camera and just expect this to give you the right size because you're going to have that huge picture in your site anyway. It's going to show a smaller one, but it's, the big one is still going to be on your site, taking up space, slowing down your site. So let's say I'm showing the medium size version. And if we look at link to, I select, for example, media file. What this will do is, it'll create a 300 pixel size sort of thumbnail, and then a person can click on it, and it will link to and show the original media file, the original 1000 size. So I say, okay, never mind, no link. I just want the picture. They can't click on it to do anything, so none. They can click on it to show the original media file. And then the, the third one is attachment pages. It'll show the picture larger also, <laughs> but the difference is that media file will usually just show the picture on a plain white background. If you select media, if you select attachment page, it will show the picture in the context of your theme. It'll hide everything else but just show your picture on its own page with your design media file will just show it on a black and white background, on a, on a white background. And here's a useful one, custom URL. Put your own address. So what if I have a picture of a product I sell, and then I add an address here to go get that, to go get that product. I have victorsshop.com slash buy now. So I can make that picture an active link. In my case, I won't select anything. Click Insert into Post. Got a picture. 
I can click the picture and I can get the alignment. I can get the alignment uh, buttons. I can also s increase or decrease the size by clicking the corner. I can remove the picture from this page. Not that I'm deleting it from my site, I'm only removing it from this page, this screen. I can go back to edit and then I get the editor in a different kind of view. But there's the caption, alt, settings, replace. What if I want to, I've already put a picture in the design, but I want a different picture, I can replace it. Edit original will take me back to that editor. Enter. Let's add media one more time. We're going to take a break actually. What I would like for you to do is try, if you'd like, to check out what Create Gallery is, maybe what featured image is, see maybe what insert URL is. We're going to take a break um, from about 7.30 to 7.40, and then we'll go on. I'm going to turn the printer back on. If you'd like to print these handouts, you can do so. It's about 7.30. Let's uh, take a break. We'll be back at 7.40. Don't do anything else here besides play with the picture, and then we'll go on. If you remember last week, um, I was having this problem. Yes. I solved it. It took me two, three days of uh, looking at films and troubleshooting and everything else. Because what they wanted me to do is get a command line, run an mlink to another file, and like that. But I found a uh, I found a quick solution. Basically, this is a file that was left in Windows. So what I did was I, I basically renamed the WAMP64, um, whatever it is, Apache, mm. um, I think it was this one here, mm. to just PHP INI. Mm. I thought it had a different, different name, but it looks like here is the same. Mm. And I just deleted this one and replaced it with this one here. Mm. And it worked. Oh, good. Just so if someone okay. else finds it, finds it. So, so, so re rename, and, rename and replace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, as I said, I hadn't seen other people get into that issue, so it's always good to have as much knowledge as possible in case it, needs, it, needs, in case it comes up again. Yeah. And of course, uh, this is yours. Okay. Oh, yeah, one of those. <laughs> but some. It was a 60 megabyte one that I bought many years ago. Hmm. Uh, Those are uh, evolving. I remember starting working with all of this stuff. It's about to be 10 years. And I remember 10 years ago when a 128 megabyte one came out. That was a big deal. Yeah, yeah this is you know, 10 times that size. Wow. Oh, that time was pretty sizable. All right. I set up a wall on my computer and I had so many problems. It took me hours. I had to do, put that C. Plus plus. Yeah. And then I had to change something in Apache to make it say listing 81 instead mm. of 83. Mm. People have had that problem. Once in a while, uh, people have mentioned that some variation of that issue on, on a Windows 10 computer. Yeah. Really Windows 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was one other thing that I, oh, I kept getting an error for four, I think it's called. And so I had to fix that all up. I forget exactly. I had to do tutorials to figure out the steps to do that. But um, I was surprised that I ran into some of this. It's just my computer that all of it is. I'm starting to hear more people telling me they have glitches with Windows 10. Yeah. I, all of my testing, honestly, I've been doing it on Windows 7 computers. Uh -huh. So I 
and I need to start to test it on Windows 10 computers and see what happens. So maybe there's some sort of glitch now with Windows 10 that makes WAMP a little harder to use. Mm -hmm. That's uh, but I finally got it, but it, just, it took a lot of like research and tutorials. And What's going on now? Well, on, on, on one sense, that's good because then uh, you're troubleshooting your problems, and sometimes that's what we need to do because we're now everything's on our shoulders. Yeah. And so if you're able to do that yourself, that's, that's a good skill to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm.